Now I would like to call upon our honorable chief guest, Professor Dr. Jamani Reza Chaudhary, sir. We all know him as GRC, sir, to come up on stage and give a few words. This uh, particular session, over the last uh, maybe 90 minutes, uh, we have been listening to very interesting presentations. First, the keynote speaker, Mr. Sanwar. Then we had the panelist, Professor Muzammil Haq Azad Khan, Akhtar Hussain, Mangala Karuna Ratna, Shamsul Haq, and uh, Nurul Islam. And finally, comments by Mr. Atik Rahman, Atik Rabbani. Uh, the year 2017 is uh, very important for basis. I think it's the 20th anniversary of its founding. Uh, so I'm uh, happy to see that I think there has been some gap. Soft Expo, was it uh, organized last year? I, th I don't think. But this year it has been revived. So congratulations to the owners, uh, to the organizers for reviving this very important event in the annual calendar for ICT. A uh, lot of discussion. Uh, we have listened to the presentations by the panelists and the keynote speaker, giving the uh, sort of history of development of I IoT, the various applications which are already being made, and the possible applications in the future. Actually, IoT, the concept was suggested about 30 years back. May not be in the name IoT, but the whole concept of uh, using the uh, connected network, the sensors. I forget the name of the gentleman, but a paper was presented around 1985-86. Initially, the name given to this was IFT, Internet for Things. I don't know how it got changed to IoT, but, huh? okay. So uh, this is now the sort of adapted uh, name for this technology, and it has been aptly named by basis, changing our lifestyle. It has already started changing our lifestyle, even in one of the least developed countries like Bangladesh. There are there have been applications of IoT in my house also. I think it was six, seven years back. Some of the door locks were operated using uh, mobile telephones. You could lock and unlock. Uh, so no sort of key was required. This is very simple technology which is available in the internet. You can uh, put a SIM and given the number, you could lock it or unlock it. So that was one of the basic, you know, very elementary applications of IoT. I know another big company, one of the largest uh, farms uh, dealing with poultry, one day old uh, chicks. Millions being moved around the country every day. And as many of you may be knowing, the chicks are very sensitive to temperature. It has to be controlled. And I know that there are sensors in every vehicle, thousands of vehicles, plying on the roads of Dhaka, and then feeding data and the temperature control from central office in Dhaka. So these are some applications, and this is also, I think, six or seven years back, the company installed, and it was done by a Bangladeshi. Now, coming to some of the applications, some of our students, like former students from Buet, they are working in various parts of the world on this particular uh, technology, various applications. So, first of all, I will look at uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, this, in the presentation, it was mentioned about the traffic jam, and, and some people think that uh, <coughs> if we have driverless cars navigating automatically, uh, there could be some improvement improvement in the scenario. But uh, 
there are lots of negative implications. As you know, in Singapore, they have already allowed uh, driverless taxis to ply. And Singapore, if, I think it has become the first country to embark on this uh, experiment, how the driverless taxis would perform. One of my former students is working on uh, autonomous vehicles uh, in England and particularly the impact on energy. And one of the scenarios is that it's going to have a negative impact in the form of uh, increased use of energy. The reason is now millions of people in cities around the world they are using mass rapid transit system. So a metro or bus rapid transit. Now if you have an affordable autonomous vehicle, then what would be the impact? From door to door you set the destinations office, you have the car maybe a small car parked in front of your house. Set the destination, you can continue reading the book, working on your laptop, and the car would take you to your destination. So what would happen, or likely to happen, instead of walking for 15, 20 minutes to the nearest metro, metro station, taking the public transport, the underground or overground trains or other vehicles, public uh, transport system, there is a likelihood of people moving away from MRT back to private vehicles. And this is likely to lead to increased use of energy. So that is one of the scenarios. So IoT, from the point of view of uh, technologists, engineers, scientists who are working on this, uh, there could be improvements, there could be negative impacts also. So this is one aspect I would like to mention. The other example, uh, I think someone mentioned about use of IoT devices for uh, taking care of the elderly people. I was reading a, an article by one of the Bangladeshis who has been living in Japan for many years. Many of you may be knowing, uh, Dr. Ashid. He was a student at uh, Buet, but then he went to Kyushu and he studied there, did his PhD, he's a faculty member. And uh, he has written a number of uh, initially blogs now published in a book form on various aspects of Japanese life, technology. One example he has given, and Japan, many of you may be knowing as one of the largest percentages of elderly population. Uh, in fact, their longevity uh, average is one of the highest in the world. So, there have a lot of people who live alone, maybe widower or widow. And uh, there have been examples when they have been found dead in the house, maybe for days without people knowing. So, they are working on uh, application of IoT you know, how to track these people. So which device could be connected uh, to a centralized monitoring system which will give an alert that this person may be uh, unwell. If I remember, they came out with the uh, sensor installed in toilet flush because if that person is alive, most likely uh, there would be need for flushing the toilet. So there are sensors. I think the company, very well-known company, Toto, they have installed sensors in the toilet flushes. So that is reports that yes, this particular person who is occupying is using the toilet. And maybe if two consecutive days there is no uh, message sent, then 
they would send someone to find out what's happening. So this is one application, I think, at least for tracking, not necessarily in uh, health monitoring, but at least a person whether he or she is alive or not. Now in Bangladesh, uh, about uh, sens sensors in bridges. We have installed bridges in uh, Bangawandu Bridge, the Jamuna Bridge. Uh, and these are all monitored from the uh, central office in Dhaka and also uh, from Buet. The reason we installed it, uh, we didn't have uh, seismic stations. We need a dense network. So a decision was made about 20 years back to install sensors on the bridge, how the bridge is performing. Performing. So these are all being monitored, at least remote monitoring, not necessarily falling into the category of IoT, but remote monitoring from Dhaka being done for some of the infrastructure. I don't know of any uh, buildings the first building in Dhaka, which was an intelligent system was installed is IDB building, where all the lights and other electrical outlets were being monitored centrally, but that's only within the building. Uh, these are not really interconnected and controlled from outside. But if I remember, I think the investment they made in intelligent building system uh, was uh, recovered within two years in the form of reduced uh, energy consumption. Smart agriculture, uh, the example which uh, Professor Muzammila Azad Khan, I think, is from Sri Lanka, or at least the narrator appeared to be someone from uh, South. Huh? Kerala or South India. Because two weeks back I was in uh, Colombo and I visited uh, Moratua University. They're offering a master's program in irrigation engineering and I spent some time looking at the research uh, which is being done and they're also uh, looking at it. There's an experimental field next to the university and uh, applying the same uh, technology, measuring the moisture in the soil and then automatically controlling the valves. So. This particular technology, I'm sure, is not very difficult uh, and it can be replicated in Bangladesh where the present technology, as many of you are knowing, that it's sort of like brush fire. You spray uh, water without really realizing there may be a soil which, uh, uh, which is already oversaturated with moisture. It doesn't need additional water, but on-demand irrigation that is possible using the network. Now I come to some of the problems I foresee. As we become more and more dependent on these uh, interconnected sensors, number one is reliability of the system. It depends a lot on the uh, communication system. And uh, someone mentioned that with, even with 3G we can uh, get uh, workable system, but with more and more sensors connected, uh, I'm not sure whether the present network would be capable of handling the traffic. And as we know that uh, movement to 3G has also been very slow. Uh, I don't think uh, many of the users uh, who are connected to the mobile cellular telephone system, uh, not a large percentage have the benefit of uh, getting 3G access. Other countries uh, moving to 5G uh, only started recently. So as the number of devices, the sensors, they increase, then I think we have to revisit the whole uh, infrastructure system. Assuming that we are able to keep pace with the development, then comes security and privacy, as has been mentioned. These are some of the major concerns of the developed countries also. As uh, 
the designers, operators go on increasing the security walls. The hackers, or now the new term I hear is hacktivist. Hacktivists are more and more active how to uh, get inside, uh, breaking the security barrier. So there would be a constant struggle between the designers and the hackers. And uh, I don't know whether you have seen a film, I forget the name, about the identity theft of a girl. It was very popular. She lost her total identity, everything. It was erased from the computer and she could not access her system, ATM, everything. It was done deliberately by someone uh, who was after her. I don't know whether you have seen that film, but it was about 10 years back. So if everything you are doing uh, is being monitored, and then access to different devices, your accounts, uh, someone can really wipe it out. So what happens? So these are uh, interesting sort of uh, societal issues which we have to address. Privacy, even now, uh, not yet in our country, but very soon we will also be reaching that. With so many of the CCTV cameras operating, uh, maybe the crime rate would go down, but then it would be intruding into your privacy. Someone would be able to monitor where you have been at what time, what you have been doing. All these would be monitored. So, for the young uh, students who are here, I think it's a big challenge. Uh, there are lots of opportunities for uh, doing research particularly applied research, looking at the problems that we in Bangladesh are facing and how best we can use uh, IoT, the emerging technology. In fact, I was reading a report published by a magazine called Business Intelligence. They come up with uh, reports on various aspects of technology regularly and uh, out of the 30 major technological developments in 2017, they have identified five would be related to IoT. And you have already seen the projections. Uh, I think Mr. Sanwar showed that about 34 billion uh, IoT devices by 2020. So it's a very rapid growth, growth. The opportunities for Bangladesh is not only application in our country, but selective application, but also, as was mentioned, uh, developed countries, uh, we can uh, provide solutions related to IoT for some of the developed countries. The market is also uh, the predicted that Within the next five years, I think average would be about one trillion per year. So for the software developers here, it's a big opportunity if we come up with uh, solutions which are applicable to developed countries, then uh, not only your companies, but in general, Bangladesh economy and the employability of young graduates would uh, see a positive impact. So with these few words, I would like to conclude. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me, giving me an opportunity for sharing some of my thoughts with you. Thank you. <laughs>